I was really pumped up and excited to go to Baku, Azerbaijan. That flight from Sofia, Bulgaria over the Black Sea into Haidar Aliyev International was pleasant enough. Luckily, we had a nice stewardess. And there, waiting for us, were those fancy London taxis. And they whisked us to our lovely hotel overlooking the Caspian Sea. You could see the city outside the, of the left, the airplane as we flew in. The beautiful Riviera. I believe it's going to be almost 30 miles long where you can walk continuously, anchored by many parks, hotels, shopping centers. Yes, it's controversial, Azerbaijan. I mean, after all, it's a new country. They signed all their oil contracts in 1994 and never looked back. The money's just been pouring in. And uh, so what? If there's corruption, nepotism... Why should a visitor care? The city's safe, it's clean, the food's good. So, from what I could see, President Ilham and his wife, his vice president, are doing a great job. I mean, Putin was just there last week congratulating them on how nice the city looked. It's almost two and a half million people. I think the thing that uh, impressed me the most was the boulevard along the Caspian Sea. Work on this, of course, started 100 years ago, and it's just steadily improved. They've made a fantastic decision by setting the road far, far away with at least three concourses, a beach, a boardwalk, and then a terraced uh, park-like setting with uh, numerous restaurants and venues. I think there's like three malls along the walk and numerous hotels i mean soon there's going to be going in a huge fountain in front of a seven a star hotel the city's certainly come alive with the fact that there's going to be the grand prix there next month and then cop 29 in november yeah it looks like uh, that's a nice track for a grand prix i was wondering what all those fences were so it's like las vegas the population's young they're friendly they're well educated like this scientist that I met at the Welcome Center for COP29. I think he has three degrees. He explained to me uh, what's going on with the Caspian Sea and answered all my other questions. Very impressive. We walk along that boulevard along the Caspian Sea as the sun sets and it slowly gets dark and then those flame towers ignite in the distance. You say to yourself, wow. One interesting computer to synchronize some, uh, synchronize flames of a building that, that size. Wow. never felt um, uh, so special or, or so privileged and comfortable um, in any other city in, in the whole world. I mean, where Dubai is just sprawling, that's like some 30 miles just to get from one end to the other and everything seems to be so spaced out and crowded, Baku is compact. Where Tbilisi seems like the Wild West, politically unstable and rough around the edges, Baku seems safe. Where Armenians have numerous grievances and they they don't like any of their neighbors, they seem to be fighting all the time, you don't feel that at all with the people there in Azerbaijan. They're very nice. They seem happy. They seem content. And I, I really enjoyed m meeting many of them.
can't be dead. Yeah, this place, it's got a really nice vibe. Really, really nice vibe. I started out at the Caspian Sea. It's almost 100 feet below sea level. So you actually feel a little energized with the extra oxygen. There's this beautiful mall called Dennis Mall. It looks a lot like the That's Sydney kind of Opera House. It's a long way down there. But, uh, I don't know, I'm pretty old now, so I'd probably be better off just checking in here and play, play Lego. Looks more my speed. Actually, this, this might be more my speed. Man, I used to really like doing this stuff when I was a little younger. From there, you can walk across the street through this lovely uh, marble underpass and catch the Baku funiculaire. That's funny. 50 cents for popcorn. It takes you up to Highland Park. It was pretty hot when I went. I was surrounded by Russians. And there on the top, on the right, was the uh, Mosque of the Martyrs. Beautiful mosque. Um, it's a gift from Turkey. There was uh, no one there uh, when I went. So I was able to take in the view, wash my hands, go inside, and just enjoy the beautiful colors. Then it's a short walk to the Alley of the Martyrs. This is perhaps the most beautiful and touching thing uh, that I saw in in Baku. It's quite clear that they lost a lot of good men in their war with Armenia and what the Russians did to them. Yeah, between 1990 and 92 was some sad times. From there, you see the eternal flame, and then a beautiful view of the harbor. Even their royal family took a picture here once, so of course I had to get a photo, take a selfie, and take in the view. There in the distance, you see their famous flagpole. Apparently, it used to be the highest in the world, but then Turkmenistan and Saudi Arabia upped them, so they had to get a new contract. I think Germany's building this current one, and it's it's over 600 feet high. It's just just amazing, and I suspect that that base they could probably peel it away and uh, make it even higher if someone uh, tries to uh, outdo them. But uh, what what a magnificent All flagpole! The symbolism here, the way they've laid everything out, it's just impeccable. Got the flame, eternal flame. Got the martyrs. And you got the big flame. Oh yeah. Now they they really got it dialed in around here. Just look at the size of that flagpole. That mall was amazing. So that is the highest flagpole in the world. It was so high it fell over. That is where they had Eurovision 2011 25. They built that in six months. They could hold 50,000 people. And she's saying that, that those right there is um, a seven star hotel that's going in beside the business center. And if you look right between it, um, you'll see the gas go off and burn off. Yeah, see, that's a symbol of Azerbaijan. There's seven countries that surround the Caspian Sea. From there, I grabbed a quick lunch in the Flame Towers, the, the Fairmont Flame Towers. Lovely hotel. Loved it in there. Yeah, going for a nice walk here. Baku yeah, really knows how to make lentil, lentil like soup way better than turkey. The, street, right? they're, they're all walking, right? the next morning, I was off to see the most distinctive cultural symbol of Baku, the Maiden Tower. 
It is seen on their 1 manat and 250 manat currency notes. The structure could be almost 2,000 years old. Its history is the history of Baku. It is as tall in height as the Caspian Sea is in depth below sea level, about 97 feet. What makes it so interesting is that it is a four-in-one complex, reflecting religion, science, and architecture. There are rectangular windows on the side positioned to predict seasonal movements of the sun. It could serve also as a defensive structure, a refuge, during a siege, holding about 200 people in comfort, since there is a well on the second floor, with lots of space for weapons and food storage. Lastly, it's a lookout tower to view over the Caspian Sea. In fact, the real name for the tower was not Maiden, but rather the Eye Tower. I was only able to figure this out from a chance meeting with a genius Kazakh professor of linguistic historical geography later in the day. She pointed out that the tower had no inscriptions to go by, so it was only verbal tradition, and it was called the Kuz Kalesi. The Russians didn't perceive the subtle differences in the word I, that is Koz, for the word girl, Kuz. Particularly since there was an old fanciful Zoroastrian story about a fiery maiden that saved Baku from slavery. The word Kuz stuck. On a side note, I believe that uh, C.S. Lewis borrowed heavily from Azerbaijani folklore in his uh, Chronicles of Narnia. The Eastern Sea is actually the Caspian Sea, but he took that name to name Prince Caspian. And if you look at a lot of these maps, Narnia is Azerbaijan on the western shore of the Caspian Sea. From there, I had to walk over and see the double gate. After all, a week earlier, we got to see the Iron Gate in Serbia. And in February, I was able to shoot a video of the gates of Refidim. Yeah, so we made it to the Iron Gate. We've heard of the Persian Gate. And then there's the gates of Refidim. But this is the double gate of Baku. The double gate. Unbelievable. Love that. They worship the lion and ox. Well, prosperity. It's like the Grand Prix is going to go through here. Within the old city, there's lots of art both outside and in the shops. The Palace of the Shirvanshahs is at the top of the hill. There's a couple of old, to old tombs up there that have been rebuilt. Soon it was time to cool off, and luckily I found a nice coffee shop. Yeah, she's dying out there, it's 90 degrees. So I just walked into the place, they gave me a free thing of water with ice. They made, they made me a virgin Baku mint tulip. <laughs> oh, that's funny. From there was a $3 bolt ride that took me to the Hyder Cultural Center. It's such a futuristic appearing place you think you're in a movie set. Love it. The musical section alone was worth the visit. I mixed emotions about this kind of music. <laughs> I never knew that zernas have been used in weddings to celebrate when the bride is removed from the patrimonial home. If only my daughters let me play. Happiness is when your daughter leaves the home and finds a man who makes a living. Then they take a trip that leads to heaven. Happiness is Before leaving the grounds of this lovely museum, one has to take a picture below the hill with the I Love Baku sign. If you have time in Baku, 
a visit to the carpet museum is worth it. It's quite boring, but when you realize that Azerbaijani's view of carpets are much like how we think about cars in America, then it would all make sense. For you start out in life with a special carpet when you're born. As a teenager, you, get, you might get a loom if you're lucky. You start making carpets, and then you have one when you're married, and then soon there's another carpet as you age. The colors are chosen, the patterns reflect so much um, what's in your culture. Yeah, I really enjoyed Baku. The place to go at night is Fountain Square. There are restaurants from all over the world, lots of shopping, great place to walk, and street performers. to um, world famous uh, Fountain Square in Baku. And um, yeah, it's, it truly is a magical night. I mean, we just had some Turkish food and it was phenomenal. So uh, yeah, no, I just love Baku. Way better than Armenia. Before catching your flight at the airport, one can get a coffee and a snack in a cocoon. These cocoon pods are reminiscent of the old nomadic felt tents of the steppe. These are called yurts or gur, kiesitirs. Yeah, that was kind of a kind of a fun little last thing to do. Sit in a cocoon. Now, I think it's time to fly to the other side of the Caspian Sea. Turkmenistan, Kyrgyzstan. Kazakhstan are waiting for more discovery. Yeah, I'd still rather be in Baku. You know, there's a lot of falafel up here, Turkish cuisine. 